everyone welcome back to another video today we are focusing on my absolute favorite color especially for mixing the color green so let's jump right in Okay, so to start, I'm just gonna go through my materials. I am painting in my Etcher Lab cold press sketchbook today. I have Winsor Newton Cotman watercolors in my palette. Let me just go through the colors quickly. I have Dioxazine Purple, Permanent Rose, Turquoise, Ultramarine, Hooker's Green Dark, Sap Green, Cadmium Yellow, and Cadmium Red Deep. So this is our limited palette. They're all linked in the description below. Um, and that's what we're gonna be using today. So we are gonna be mixing the color green. And usually in my palette, I have two greens, which are Hooker's Green Dark and Sap Green. But if you want to use even less paint, we can just use Hooker's Green. And I think for today's challenge, I'm just gonna use the one green. We don't need Sap Green. I just like it because I use it a lot. But if you didn't have that, I'll show you how to make it. I, I already showed you how to do it in the intro video, but if you haven't watched that, I'll do it again here. So let's get started. So we're mixing greens today. Like I said, my favorite color. So let's just jump right in. So here's our hooker's green dark, and I'm just gonna swatch it for you just to show you what it looks like on its own. This is my favorite green. It has a nice kind of warm, not warm, cool tone to it. It's not a blue green, but it's a nice deep green, which I like. It is more on the cool side rather than the warm side, so it has more blue to it rather than yellow, um, but it is wonderful for mixing. Okay, so here is our base color green. Now, we also know that we can make green with blue and green. So let's, blue and green, blue and yellow. <laughs> I'm a little tired. Um, blue and yellow. So let's let's mix some greens too without using a green paint. So here we have turquoise. Wash my brush off. And here we have ultramarine. And different shades of blue and different shades of yellow will give you different shades of green. So I'm just going to mix my cadmium yellow with both of these to show you. So the turquoise, you get this pretty vibrant green. And with the ultramarine, you get a bit of a darker, deeper green. You actually kind of get more of a sap green. So if you don't want to pay for sap green, you can kind of just make it on your own. Okay, but you see how different those two greens are just based on the different shades of blue. And you can get different results with different shades of yellow as well. So another thing to remember is that depending on how much of each color you use, you can change up the hue or the shade of the green. So if I add more blue, was this one, I'll get more of a blue green, add a bit more yellow. Okay, it's a bit darker too. If I add a bit more turquoise to this one, I'll get more of a blue-green as well, but a different shade. If I add more yellow, I'm gonna get more of a lime green. If I add more yellow on this one, let's see what happens. It's almost kind of like a olive -y kind of green. Okay, so there are one, two, three, four, five, six different shades of green just using two different blues and a yellow. Also remember that you can change the value to get a different shade as well. So I'm just taking some of that pigment off of my paintbrush and you can make it nice and light and you get a different value. So you can make tons and tons of different greens. So now that we know how to mix a green just using blue and yellow, let's take our actual green here, Hooker's Green Dark, and see what fun um, shades we can make. So I'm just gonna take my Hooker's Green and I'm gonna put it in different little areas. And I think my favorite shade of green, like I like to wear green, I like to paint with green, I like painting greenery, um, I think is olive or like a kind of bluish green, like a, a muted eucalyptus color. So actually let's start with making that. And we kind of made that color when we did our purple video. So I'm gonna take some dioxazine purple and just a bit mix it with that. And remember half and half of that makes gray. So we need a bit more green. 
and then you get this nice kind of muted green. And sometimes I actually like to add a little bit of blue to it and that makes more of a eucalyptus -y color as well. Let me just lighten it up and show you. It's like such a nice soft kind of like um um what's it called? Like a sea foam green, which I really like. Okay, so there's that mixture, the purple and the green, which is so much fun. Um, let's see what happens if we add a contrasting color. So red and green are contrasting colors. They sit across from each other on the color wheel, right? Complementary are contrasting colors, same thing. They sit across from each other on the, on the color wheel and they mix together half and half make brown. But if you wanna mute a color, or tone down its vividness and brightness, um, you just add a little bit. So let's add a little bit of cadmium red to this, this green. And it gives it a bit of a brown tint to it. Maybe a bit more. There we go. Okay, and it gives kind of like this neutral, like earthy green, like that, which is nice. Let's add a bit more green there. Let's play around a bit more, maybe add a little bit of yellow a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red. See if we can get more of an olive, oops, an olive green. There we go. Like that. Oh, and the other one I wanted to show you too with the purple, uh, dioxazine purple and the Hover's green dark is that you can make a really nice dark green with those two. You just need to use a lot more paint like that. There you go and you get a really nice, deep, dark, kind of Christmassy hunter green. Okay, now let's mix some green and blue. So we can just take a little bit of ultramarine here and you get this kind of turquoisey green. Let's mix a bit of turquoise with it. Actually, we get kind of that same color that we did there. Let's try hooker's green and pink, oopsie, hooker's green and pink. Because remember, pink derives from the color red, so it's kind of like a contrasting color. So it's gonna mute it. Ooh, that's a nice one too. It's kind of like a grayish green. Does something similar like the purple does, like that. And now let's try and make some more brown green. So we have this one here, which was the yellow, a little bit of the yellow, a little bit of the red, and a little bit of the green there. Let's add a bit more red and try and make it a bit more on the brown side. Like that, you can always add a bit more green. And remember, all these colors are gonna change depending on what green you use too. So if I were to use sap green and mix it with all of these, it would be different too. Maybe not too, too different, but a little bit different. Okay, so there's tons and tons of greens you can make and it's great for greenery. So our little composition that we're gonna do here, I thought we could do a really nice um, wreath, like a nice greenery wreath. So let's do that today. And this is great practice for working on um, your leaves. So I think I'm gonna take this brighter green here and water it down to do the first few. If you wanna draw a guideline for a circle, you can definitely do that. I'm just gonna kinda of wing it. <laughs> I'm gonna start off with just making some guidelines with the tip of my brush, like that. And then we can start doing some leaves. And the key to doing leaves is light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. Okay, so let me show you. Light pressure to have a nice, really thin tip right, thin stroke and then thick stroke. So you press down and then back up again with light pressure, okay? So light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure, and that gives you a nice leaf shape. This is something that you need to practice. It might not come the first time, but just keep at it and you will get it. So light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. And it will change depending on the shape, or not the shape, the size of your brush. So I'm using a size 12 right now, so I'm getting some bigger leaves. And don't be afraid to really push down either. You're not gonna ruin the brush. Light pressure, push down, heavy pressure, light pressure. And one other thing to keep in mind, when you lift your paintbrush up off the paper, sometimes you'll get a little pool right there. That's okay. When it dries, it may give you a little weird watermark. And if you don't like that, before you move on and before it dries, just move that paint around. And if there's still too much water there, 
tap your brush on your paper towel and just kind of soak up that water and paint, okay? Light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. Like that. I love doing leaves. I think it's one of my favorite things to do. And another thing to do with them is kind of twist your, your wrist too, and it makes the leaf kind of dance. <laughs> If that makes any sense. Okay, so light pressure, heavy pressure, curve it. Curve it the other way and lift up. You can flick it a bit. Like that. You can make them smaller, bigger, depending on the pressure that you're using. Okay, let's do a different shade. Let's do this color that we have here. Just do fill in that little gap. Maybe I'll make these a little bit fatter. So we're just shortening that heavy pressure time. Okay, you're just kind of almost going up and down and they don't have to be perfect. I think a lot of people worry about their leaves being perfect and you really do not have to make them perfect. Okay, not all leaves are perfect. You're gonna find ones in actual nature that have little pieces missing or are starting to turn brown or, you know what I mean? Nothing's perfect, so don't even worry about it. The greens and the shapes will just make it look nice and natural anyway. Okay, so just, sometimes I like to go over it and just fix my shapes a little bit. Like that. And you can always do a leaf shape in two parts too. So you could do the light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure and then do it again, creating a thicker leaf, like that. And then sometimes what I like to do is go back in, so I'm just creating a bit more of that darker green. Just tap the bottom of some of my leaves and the stems to get a bit of a dark bleed happening. And it just adds a little bit of depth, like that, okay? Okay, so let's, Let's, let's keep going. I'm gonna, um, sorry, I'm gonna work with my size six brush and I'm gonna try and go in between those and we'll do some smaller leaves. So let's grab a bit more green here, a bit of red. We're gonna do more of a neutral red, a little bit of yellow. So green, red, and yellow. And I'm gonna start doing little branches coming off of these light green ones. So I'm gonna do one branch there, one branch there. I'm gonna do small little leaves like this. Okay, and I'm just using the shape of my brush to kind of dab up and down like that. And that's also why I like using these round brushes, just because it's a great shape, natural shape for your leaves and your florals. not trying to be perfect just kind of quickly going in and doing these leaves like that filling them up let's do more of a greeny blue one so I'm just mixing whatever green I had over here with the blue like that and I'm actually gonna make these lighter so I'm just gonna water it down Just filling it in with a light wash of this color. that and hmm, 
let's make some darker greens. Let's do that really nice dark one. So we kind of did that color, but it was lighter here. So let's make it even darker. So grab your green and grab your dioxazine purple. You can always do it more on the purple side too, if you like. I just want a nice dark, dark green. Let's do some longer leaves, okay? And there's some bleeds happening um, because I didn't wait for it to dry, but that's okay too. So I'm gonna do stem and then I'm gonna do some longer leaves coming after it. And you just drag it a little longer. So heavy pressure, drag it, light pressure. Okay, and you can get some nice long leaves. like that. Okay, and so there's a wreath. Um, tons of different things you could do with these greens. Tons of different greens you can make. Um, another combination I really like is cadmium orange with green. I don't have it in this palette, but you can make, it's kind of like what we did with the yellow and the red and the green, um, but cadmium orange is a little bit more vibrant, so that's fun too. But there you go, and that's about it. So there is how you mix different greens. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram and Facebook for even more. Have a great day guys. Bye!